Hello, and welcome to this video. You might know from watching, if you watch any of my other videos, that I'm into this new, well, new to me, but actually very old, um, Japanese flute called the Hito Yogiri. And uh, this is a new version I've made. It gets a little thicker at the top, which makes a, a wider area for your mouth lip to rest and actually makes it a lot easier to play. Um, this is the wider bore of the ones that I've been trying to make. Um, I keep trying to experiment where the holes are supposed to be and they're still not quite in the right place with this one but um, I want to actually jump ahead and experiment with making a large bore Hito Yogiri, like pretty large, which is going to be this outer diameter here. Um, so as you can see, the inside of this will end up, not this, sorry, the inside of the Hito Yogiri, inside of, the inside of the bore will be about as big as the outside of this one. Anyway, um, just to show you what this one is like real quick. So I'm also trying a different technique with how I prepare the paper uh, cardstock or whatever that I use for this that, if you've seen my other videos, comes from a cereal box. Um, see? So, I'm trying coiling it up dry first, and then seeing if I can um, wrap it around the mandrel without getting it really wet, um, so that it doesn't leave as quite a deep of grooves right here. Um, I don't know, we'll see. It's just a different variation, but I'm also going to try to add a flared top right here. So I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so I'm pulling the this string against the vise here, against the vise here, and um, I like to go back, uh, do one pass, kind of with wide coils to kind of squeeze the whole thing, and then I come back and slowly fill it in. So I'm going to try um, running this under water to see if it'll kind of absorb some water and hold its shape better. And then I'll let it dry and come back to it. This is dried, so now I'm just going to unwrap it.
I cut um, this to size. So I hope that editing of me chopping it with a knife um, <laughs> cut, didn't look too dumb. Anyway, so first I cut off, I actually just cut it with a razor blade. I cut off this much and um, I compared it to one that I already have made and it was a little bit too low so I cut off this other little bit and I just guess and then um, it ended up being pretty close. Uh, then the other thing I did was I measured out where the holes should be. So I think I talked about this in the other video um, where I've made other ones but this hole should be um, just a little bit higher than one octave above the lowest note. All holes closed. So when you do, if you can find where that is through trial and error, um, then these holes, this one, this one, this one, will be equally spaced between that one and that one. I don't know how far this one is up. I think around 17... I don't... Uh, 7 centimeters. That's what I meant to say. Seven. I think it's somewhere around 7 centimeters. Anyway, um, I could be wrong. In any case, um, for just... Uh, if I've tried this before where you just put this hole in without putting these holes in and it doesn't work right. Um, for some reason you have to put these holes, I think. That's what I tried in the past. I maybe don't remember it right, but... So what I'm gonna do next is draw some holes on and I'm going to cut them with the razor blade, um, like an X-Acto knife. <sighs> I'm sure there's better ways, but that's the most convenient way for me right now. Let's do it. Hey, so I got all the holes cut, but what happens is it doesn't make a sound anymore. For none of the, for any of the holes. Once I cut this hole, all the sound died. And a similar thing happened when I tried to make this very large bore flute. So I'm gonna try kind of like a radical thing. That's like old lipstick stuck to my lips, in case you're wondering. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to try putting something inside the board to see if I can get it to play again. Um, we'll see. Uh, it may just not work. I don't know. One thing that I've heard of is like you can drop like a... You can put like a piece of paper that's wet in there and then it'll stick to the side and then play it. And um, that's how they tune, like, shakuhachi sometimes. Um, I, I don't know. I've never really successfully tried that. I've also heard of, like, a bead on a string and stuff. Um, anyway, I'm just kind of just, just going to give it a try. So I decided to um, try to coat the inside of the bore with a little bit of... Uh, Elmer's glue, or also known as PVA glue. Um, one interesting thing about this is it's so common and used for like craft stuff that I, you know, 
I used to just think of it as just some junky thing, but it turns out they sell bottles of PVA glue for oil painting to use um, underneath, like you put it directly on the canvas. So it's actually like pretty uh, useful glue. Um, anyway, <laughs> I always say anyway like that. Well, what I was gonna say was, uh, I can get, you know, in this far, as far as my finger is. So, but I need an, another way to get glue all the way through. Um, I made this a long time ago. It's just like a circle of plastic on the end of a dowel. And I was using that to kind of like squeegee the glue through there, which works okay, because the glue's kind of thick. Um, one thing I might try is I have this uh, brush from an old um, mascara applicator. Um, so I'll, I would cut off the handle like that, like this one here. And then just glue or tie it to this uh, chopstick. I think if I went that route, I would have to thin down the glue a bit. Not sure, but I'll, I'll give them both a try. So far, the squeegee, like this squeegee method is working. But uh, with just the little bit I've done, it's already made it more playable. So I can almost get all the notes, which is pretty cool. I think that I'll try coating the hole inside, see if I can get all the notes, make all the holes the same size. See, this one's a little bit too big. Um, and see how that goes. I also, I forgot to uh, include, um, put the glue on the blowing edge. And I think that helped kind of sharpen it up. But. But um, the reason why I wanted to make it, I've said this a bunch, but the reason why I wanted to make it that larger bore is um, that tone I like better than that small bore. It's got more overtones and I like the timbre, the tone quality better. Let's see how, I mean, I'll check back in once I coat it and see how it works. Okay, so I finished um, coating the inside with the glue and I ended up using just the squeegee method kind of, uh, that I mentioned. And I did say that I was gonna enlarge the holes, but I matched, I compared it to this one that I already have. And <clears throat> I did want, uh, particularly like, like these third, fourth, and fifth hole to be slightly higher. And they are, and maybe a little more than I expected. So I'm not gonna enlarge them then it'll be even farther off. So I think the next step is I'm gonna apply a coat of kind of varnish. It's gonna be a water-based um, kind of varnish thing. Uh, it's the same stuff that I used on a stand-up paddle board that I built. I have a video for that way back at the very beginning of when I first started posting videos. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out. Um, I'll put a link to it. So I'm gonna coat that and then we'll see how it goes. I'll just let you hear how it sounds. So I think it was just, at least in part, the rough surface because I hadn't coated anything in it yet the rough surface of the card 
board, you know, the cereal box, that was kind of preventing the sound from reverberating. I don't know. I wish I knew more about, like, the physics of it all and stuff, but um, I just try to learn it bit by bit. Uh, so I guess I'm pretty happy with it. So anyway, next step. So this is what I was planning to coat the bore with. And this lid was completely sealed on. So I, so I dumped it into this bag. I've had this for maybe seven years. Well, we'll see if it works. Hey, um, I have my newborn son just right over here, so if you hear something, that's probably him. This is the goop that I'm gonna try to coat this with. And I took the mascara brush and tied it to this bamboo chopstick. So here's where I'm at with it now. I coated it with this kind of water-based stuff that I showed you, which I prefer the uh, things, the stuff that I've used before, but this has less smell. Like this is basically just acrylic paint. First, I was gonna try to play a traditional piece. Um, it's called Shote. So let me just try it. Is that part up. So that's by no means a professional job of playing it, but just thought you might want to hear that. And then also I'm going to put together this more contemporary play piece where I play ukulele and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoy. Um, thanks for watching and please consider checking out some of my other videos.